In this tutorial, what we're going to do is go back and revisit the code we looked at last time that just created a blank screen from Phaser. And we're going to fix up our code a little bit so that it follows better style. So last time we were here, um, we had an index.html file that got the Phaser 3 JavaScript library and then took our game.js file, which was over here, and we created one variable that was this config variable, and we used that variable to create a game instance, and then we just printed that out to the console. And if you go back to your GitHub repository, our code was saved there, and this is our current version of our game, that is just a blue screen. So what we want to do is go back to our code and fix up these files so that they actually have proper style. So we did a very sort of minimal um, introduction, but we should add some niceties so that our code is easier to read. And the first thing that we're going to do is add some more comments to the head section of our program. So we should always have a description that tells what our game is. We should have some keywords so that our web page can be searchable. We should always have an author so you know if you have any questions who you can talk to. And we're going to set the viewport so that it is at the standard initialized scale of one. The next thing that we're going to do is it would be really nice if we could add a comment in just before this script so that people know that this is the particular version that I am using at this time, but you should always go and get the latest updated version. So if someone's using this at a later date, you can go to this URL, just gonna go there now, and you can find out what the latest version is and you can get the link to the latest version. So we add that in so that we're always on the latest version of our Phaser 3 JavaScript library. The next thing that we're going to add in is what's called the Fivi icon. So you'll notice up here, there's a little icon of a spaceship and many websites have that. The um, website for our course has the little Mother Teresa logo, but for our Space Aliens game, we have a globe, which could be okay but this is just the default one that shows up um, because it's a GitHub page. If you actually open up the website here, right from Repl.it, you'll notice that it shows up there as well. But what we'd like to do is actually have a little spaceship show up. So if you actually go to the website for today, you'll notice that at the bottom, there is the link that has all your icons that you would need and even the site that manifests. So you can just click on the little expand arrow. At the moment, we're not gonna need the assets, but later on we will. So you can just select all these files, alternate click and say download. And Google will start downloading these as a zip file. Might take a little second here. There we go. Give it some appropriate name and put it wherever it is that you um, will be able to find it. So I'm just going to call this Space Aliens. It does download it as a zip file. So I'm currently on a Mac, so I can just click open to open it up and unzip it. Depending on your operating system, you might need to do something different. So you can unzip files on a Chromebook or on a Windows computer. It's just going to be slightly different on yours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm just going to take these files and I'm just going to drag and drop them into the root of our file system here. That's by default where they normally go. Okay, so I just copied them all over into there. Now that I have them copied over, what I'd like to do is have references to those so that if someone is looking at their tabs, they can actually see our little icon show up, which will be our spaceship that we're going to be using eventually. 
So by default, you want to create one for Apple Touch at 180. The 32 and 16 are the standard ones for a Windows computer. And there's also the web manifest here. If you are using Android devices, there are ways to create it for Android devices as well. Um, and I think that's about it for our index.html page. The next one is our game.js. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to add some comments to the very beginning so that you know who wrote the code. So we have this line of code at the very top, which tells JavaScript that there is a global variable called phaser, which is this variable right here. And we're going to leave that at the top of every single one of our JavaScript files. We're going to add in um, a copyright statement because JavaScript likes you to have a copyright statement, then a blank line, and who wrote the code, when you wrote it, and what the heck this thing does. So these are comments in JavaScript. You just put two slashes at the front and you'll notice it goes green so that everybody can understand what's actually going on. We're just going to add a comment right at the beginning of our constants variable here. Oops, sorry about that. Just so that people understand that this is going to be the setup for our game scene. We're going to add a few more lines to our config file as well. So we have set the background color. What we're going to do is we're going to add in a line or several lines that tell Phaser to use physics, and we're going to be using something called Arcade Physics. And Arcade Physics just sets up a system so that basic arcade type games will work by default nicely. And we're actually going to set this debug to true so that we can see little bounding boxes show up around our objects that we're going to be using. And that's going to be helpful for us to try to debug our code. The last thing that we're going to change after our background color, so make sure you, we're going to add something so you have to put a comment, a comma there, is this scale. So we're going to set scale to scale fit, which is just going to make our game scene always fit to the full screen. And if you shrink the screen, it will auto shrink for you. That's what's out those lines of code are going to do for us. So that'll make it nice so that it'll fit on any device, even if you play it on your iPhone, it will still work nicely. And we're gonna add this line of code, which will center it into the center of our screen for us. Everything else we're gonna leave just as is. So if you click run, you will notice that if you open this up now, that it actually is centered in our screen. And as you shrink it, it will always stay centered in the screen. So you'll notice it resized by default for us there. And that's what we would like to happen. So now our game will actually fit the full screen for us and it'll always work no matter what device we have. And you will notice at the top up here, we have our little icon, which is what we were looking for. So that's now showing up. So once again, once you're done changing all your code, you should come over to version control. It will tell you what files have changed. You're gonna to have to put in a comment so that people understand what you have changed in this version. So um, added comment to our files and hit commit and push. And it will submit that code back up to GitHub so that all those are saved and changed. So if you go back to your GitHub page and reload it, you'll notice there's all the new items that we have just added in. And if you go to your GitHub pages page and reload it, it might not change instantaneously. So remember GitHub sometimes takes a little while, so it might take a little while for that to filter through. It could be up to about 20 minutes but you know that your code works because you opened it up from Replica. So 
that was the goal today to actually get our code formatted nicely. And next time what we're going to do is we're actually going to create uh, our very first scene so that our code is broken up into different scenes so that we have a nice flow for our game.